And these reasons are also reasons which caused Isaiah 53 to leave me out of Christianity, even without fully understanding to who exactly the uh, chapter is referring to. Uh, these basic reasons are that in the entire chapter of Isaiah 53, which Christians consider sort of the gospel of the Old Testament, it's like the most obvious proof of, the, of Christianity is often claimed, you will find nowhere in this chapter, regardless of whoever it's intended to be a reference to, and regardless of what, of what suffering is described in it, nowhere in this chapter do we find the teaching of the divinity of a human being, that a human being is the Almighty become man. And those few verses elsewhere in the Bible which Christians seem to think, uh, they do think, claim that this is taught is only an issue of ignoring the context or of not knowing Hebrew. Um, so that's one. Deity of, of, Yash, of, of any human being is not taught anywhere in Isaiah 53. Um, it doesn't teach anywhere in Isaiah 53 that salvation is exclusively through this individual being spoken of, whether it's a metaphorical individual or whether it's a literal individual. It doesn't teach anywhere in this chapter. Where is it taught in this chapter? Dear Christian, please show me uh, that salvation is exclusively through this particular individual. Where does it teach that forgiveness is only attainable through the blood shed from this individual? We actually find in this chapter that uh, this individual spoken of in this chapter justifies people by means of his knowledge. If it were so clearly uh, an issue of his blood, then in the place where it says that by his knowledge um, he, he, the Almighty's uh, righteous servant justifies it would say blood there instead of knowledge. Or it could say knowledge and blood, whatever, even though I never find that in Christianity, that is the knowledge of, of uh, their Messiah that saved them, but rather it was their, his shedding of blood. The other thing is that, uh, it's not such a, such a big issue, but the other thing is that this, ver this chapter never says that this is reference specifically to the Messiah. This is a Christian assumption regarding the verse. And if you read the chapters before and following Isaiah 53, it's quite clear who the servant is. It's identified very explicitly as the people of Israel. Now, some may say that, yeah, the people of Israel are referred to as the servant uh, only a few chapters before Isaiah 53. And they'll say that here it's reference to a specific person. So, uh, that doesn't change the other three things, deity, exclusive salvation, and forgiveness only through the shedding of blood, which isn't taught in that chapter. But um, even though they might be able to claim that, that even though Israel is already referred to as a servant, this is some other specific servant, even though that's theoretically possible, one, that doesn't get rid of the previous three issues, um, which makes it baseless for Christianity. I'm willing to... to uh, admit if it's logical that this refers to one specific person, but that would need to be proved, and that can't be proved here. And it would also uh, be without the teaching that salvation is only through that person. Um, the additional thing is that the entire uh, um, account in Isaiah 53 of this person's suffering and, uh, and how he justifies people and how he is basically uh, destroyed, killed, and then how he, he shall see his seed and prolong his days and be highly exalted. All This entire chapter is extremely, extremely parallel to all of the rest of the book of Isaiah's account of how the people of Israel were great, a uh, nation, how among them there were sinners, and as a result, they suffered in accordance with the covenant made at Mount Sinai. They suffered uh, for violating the covenant, were exiled from their land, which is also called the land of the living elsewhere, and they were made as dead people, and the nation was as though it was dead. And, and, it, and throughout the book of Isaiah, it over and over again describes how the Almighty afflicted them, the Almighty crushed them, in plural, very explicitly, in several places throughout the book of Isaiah, using all the term all the terminology used here in Isaiah 53. 
I am amazed that this I only found today, because today was the first day that I tried to go through the entire book of Isaiah with this chapter and see, I tried to understand um, this chapter in light of the rest of the book, and I'm just blown away. I, I never, no, I, it never occurred to me when I read this as a Christian that every single point in Isaiah 53 is parallel to things said about the people of Israel throughout the, the book. I'm blown away. Um, so, there's so many things that I wrote down, references, paralleling, using the same terminology in Isaiah, in Isaiah 53 as elsewhere in Isaiah, where it's explicitly referred to Israel. So many places that I can't even go through them all, so I'll probably add them as annotations. Um, and I didn't even look carefully through the entire book, just kind of glanced through before Isaiah 53 and, and read more or less carefully afterwards. Here is... I don't know if you can see, but just a little concentration of some of these, and it's very summarized. Um, yeah, so I want to try to go through these, and I'll, uh, well, I will try to give you an idea of the context of Isaiah 53. It's preceded by chapter 51 and 52, of course. Chapter 51, uh, the Almighty begins speaking about his people of Israel in reference to them by the term Zion, which is common. Uh, the responsibility is up to you to verify what I say by looking up these things. Uh, there, it's in, in chapter 51, uh, conveyed that the Almighty will uh, punish His people, will punish Zion, just by, by means of the nations, with a sword, a famine, sickness, affliction, um, but that in the end He will save them. Chapter 52 is a call for the people of Israel to wake up and arise from their suffering, and it con it concludes with the promise that uh, Israel's future redemption and restoration will be glorious. Then we get to Isaiah 53, where uh, where I'll just put it simply before going in detail. Um, my understanding in reading this very carefully many times today is that the 51 and 52 are prophecies giving by the Almighty speaking of, of, like I already said, their punishment and then their uh, restoration and and the affliction that the Almighty put on them and how it will end up in for good. And Isaiah 53 is basically how the kings of the nations by whom the Almighty inflicted his punishment on the people of Israel, how these nations and their leaders will recognize what the Almighty has done in the end of days as described in, uh, let's see if we can find it, as described in uh, Isaiah 25, what verse is it? Let's see, this is, this is going to take forever uh, to list all of these sources in a very clear way. I don't know if I can do it in one video. That's why I'm kind of summarizing it in this video for now. Anyway, in chapter 25, uh, basically the same thing. It's referred to in many places in Isaiah, that the, that the nations of the world will finally wake up and realize what happened. It's described as the veil being lifted from their faces. Kind of interesting. Uh, Muslims and Christians often use the same exact terminology for Jews, but in the Hebrew Bible, this terminology is used for the nations of the world, <laughs> in reference to the people of Israel. So my understanding is that Isaiah 53, following the Almighty's description of their suffering and, and uh, restoration, Suddenly in Isaiah 53, the nations become aware of it, and they basically summarize and, and recount all the things that are already presented in 51 and 52. Um, only the nations in chapter 53 are recounting it in their own words.